Hello everybody, it is Toby here, back for another episode of Minecraft, the Lord of the Rings over hill. And today we are starting things off promptly in Linden, just about to head up north into the Blue Mountains to visit the Dwarves this episode. Last episode we self got ourselves geared up in some pretty decent Linden gear. And I do not remember whether we raided that house or not. But we are going to try. Sorry for the lack of episodes for about a week. And that is because school has started again, of course. And I'm currently in the middle of doing my A-levels, which obviously take a little bit of time uh, out of my, well, time for recording episodes. Basically, I don't have time to record episodes whilst I've got A-levels. Well, AS levels I've started. Not A-levels. Um, and stuff that I need to work towards in that respect. I don't have the time to come on here and do things. Ooh, we got got books. Two books. It's pretty decent. And an apple. Um, but yeah, I've got things to do. We've got these two books. I'm going to read them. Uh, Tell Perion the elder tree that shone upon the western sea, and then was Galathilion the gladly bloomed on Tyrion. Next, Celeborn the, and Nimloth fair that burned in subtle Sauron's lair, and then the trees of Gondor tall, of Minas Ithil, ere her fall, of Minas Arnor, walled and wide, and Minas Tirith in her pride. Interesting. And the Grey Wizard, whilst travelling through the Shire and the lands nearby, one may come across the humble wizard known as Gandalf the Grey, also known among the Grey Elves as Mithrandig. Gandalf the Grey is a joyous wizard, quick to anger, but always the first to laugh when he wanders the lands without home or hearth, as an old man in tattered grey robes. It is well known that, unusually for a wizard, Gandalf considers ordinary folk in the highest of regard. Indeed, he can often be found in company of the halflings of the Shire, but don't be deceived by his knockabout appearance and strange choices in company, Gandalf is arguably the wisest of the five wizards and second in skill to none other than Saruman the White. In many journeys and a wandering writer, I encountered Gandalf the Grey on two separate occasions, one long night ago at the Prancing Pony Inn of Bree. I thought I spotted him seated a few tables away, this seemed unusual to me at the time, as I would not expect to find a wizard in such a place, so I dismissed the sighting as mistaken. It was not until the following morning I discovered that it was indeed Gandalf who I had seen the night before that he offered, often frequented the inn. Such was my surprise. The second time I saw Gandalf the Grey was many years later in the town of Frogmorton. He was in ens ens concerned in pleasant pony-drawn carriage and heading west, his eyebrows protruding like bushy caterpillars from under his pointy hat and rings of smoke were puffing from his pipe as he approached me. On the road, he turned his head with a twinkle in his eye, and I will never forget the wise words he offered as he passed. What a way to start the episode, as usual. Finding two lovely books to stick in our memento's pouch. We've got five gold rings. Please, no Christmas songs. Well, what a way to start, eh? Interrupting my train of thought about school and that. To decide to get various books and things about Gandalf and trees. Very interesting. But yes, school is a thing, and thank you to all the commenters and that for understanding why school has to be a thing, but I should have quite a bit of time, hopefully, to get more episodes out, because, I mean, yeah. It's not only that I've started school, I've also got a job now after school. I um, I work from 3.30 till 5, and school ends at 3.20. So that adds another hour and a half or so onto my day and I don't get home till about six and then got homework to do and I, I just run out of time really quickly for recording these hour-long episodes so you'll have to excuse the episodes may be frequent and far but be frequent no be infrequent and far between but I will try my best to get them out for you because I know you guys love these episodes and I did manage to get an SMPDX episode out which uh, was unexpected. Me and Nano just hopped on and did some wither fighting, and it honestly was so much fun. You guys should definitely go and watch that if you haven't already. And yeah, we're approaching very quickly. Ooh, Iron Hills Merchant. Let's see if we can find him. Uh, but yeah, recently, um, we are approaching 200 subscribers, which is ridiculous. That is 
completely absurd. And yeah, it's just one of those things that that's coming quickly and probably more quickly than I can handle. Uh, it, it's going to probably come in the next couple weeks. Which, I don't know what I'm really going to do for it. If anything, I probably won't even end up doing anything because I genuinely just don't have time to. And I... That's an old noise. Oh, right, okay. So we've entered the Linden Woodlands to be... Oh, yeah, we've entered the Linden Woodlands. That means we could encounter some orcs in the night time. But it's okay, we're going to fight them. Get our alignment up with some people. But yeah. 200 subscribers is coming fast. I'm excited. It's going to be great. But that's a seagull. Is that a seagull? I don't know. It's my, it might just be a bird. Okay, so I'm dreading the night time now. Uh, for the Gundabad spawn. The spawn of Gundabad to come out. From its hidey hole. And I couldn't find it. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to see that merchant. Which is unfortunate. But we're just off to the Blue Mountains. So we will see some more dwarves. Maybe not. Well, maybe... Maybe? Why am I saying maybe? No. Just because they aren't from the Iron Hills doesn't mean we will not see dwarves. But, yeah, we will actually end up going to the Iron Hills at some point. I haven't actually been to the Iron Hills yet. It was one of those... It was the one place there that I had to go to. But didn't get actually the chance to go there before my world got deleted by accident. So, yeah. So hopefully we will make it there this time. I didn't last time. I'm scared that we're going to get jumped upon by loads of Gundabad orcs as soon as night time comes. Where is the sun? Can't see. There it is. Where, where's it moving? Oh, it's coming up. So we've got quite a bit of time before night time comes upon us. we got this lovely strong uh, Linden bow now, though. So, I mean, we should be pretty, pretty adept at fighting them when they actually do jump upon us. But I love the Linden Woodlands. The flowers here are incredible. There's so much colour everywhere. And I mean, we've just come into a clearing, which is rather nice. And all these guys just spawned in. Ilovan into you too. Forget what Ilovan in means. Ooh, there's a tower. We're not going to go in it because... Oh, there's more towers. Not going to go in it because, obviously, nothing in the towers for us. But... At least we should have some sort of protection when it comes to night time. I mean, we'll probably be out of here when night time falls anyway. Because we are making quite good progress up to Nogrod. But yeah, we actually, it's quite a long way. So we're going to see. We're going to see what happens. We'll spend some time with the dwarves. I think in the dwarves we will go up and then go up to Belagost and then come back down again. Uh, because just to spend a little more time with the dwarves in the Blue Mountains and exploring that that area there. So, yeah. May as well. I mean, we've spent far too much time in Linden, but we're going to have to have another big Linden voyage on the way back. So, we will see the elves once again, I'm pretty sure. So, I mean, the uh, Blue Mountain visit will be quite short, but not um, not in vain because we'll end up going back to the Shire. And then what we'll do from the Shire is we'll we'll go over into the old forest and that sort of place. And the old forest is good fun. It's definitely good fun. Hello, hello, elves of Linden and some deer. They make odd noises, deer. Very odd noises. But yeah, we're we're slowly getting there. Other things that have happened is. Well, since I've got a job, I should have money to do stuff. And I've just made a, a, a bit of a purchase. Um, for all of you Lego fans out there, I'm definitely a Lego fan. I, well, if you know, if you if you know about Lego, you will probably know that the Ultimate Collector Series, Millennium Falcon, biggest Lego set ever, most expensive Lego set, all this, that, the other, six hundred and fifty pounds. 7,900 pieces, 7,500 pieces, I think, something like that. That releases October 1st, but it releases, it released for VIPs on the 14th of September for about an hour, two hours or so before uh, it got taken back off sale again because, yeah, I woke up just in time for it to be released on the, online to get my order in uh, because this is a set I've been wanting for a long old time. And, yeah... Got on there, 
got my order in. Site crashed because so many people were trying to get orders in. The the site went down. The Lego site just wouldn't work. And I don't actually know whether I managed to get my order in in time or not. Uh, whether the order actually went through before the site crashed. And after the site crashed, they had to take them off sale again. For, uh, and they only lasted about an hour before everything was out of stock. And they've had to take it off sale again uh, to restock them. But... Yeah, I was completely unaware whether I'd actually got my order in or not, or whether I'd have to wait another like month or so to get them to get it. But um, I got an email uh, yesterday that said your Lego set is on its way. So it looks like my order went through, and my Millennium Falcon Lego set is on its way. So I'm gonna get that built up, and if you want me to <laughs> record something of it. I mean, I may record a bit of an unboxing of it or something because this is a crazy Lego set and I just really want to get it built and get it done. But I think I might actually record uh, a bit of the process, which could be quite fun. So, yeah, if you want to see a Lego video like that, please, please comment down below and saying, yeah, you want to see that because I think it could be something that I might do. And yeah, I'm just super excited to get this Lego set because I'm a huge Lego fan. An absolutely massive Lego fan. I've just recently bought the old fishing store and before that I got the Saturn V rocket and I got Tower Bridge as well. So I'm getting lots of Lego. I've probably spent like thousands of pounds worth of Lego. Which, I mean, it's not too bad. You can always sell it again. But I'm just looking around my room now, just absolutely surrounded in Lego. And I'm loving life. Lego's great. I don't care how much money I could have put in towards a computer. Lego's great, because my computer, it's decent. I get 30 FPS playing this mod here, which is decent enough. I mean, it still has an enjoyment factor. I still make videos with it, and yeah. But I could do with a better computer, I, I know that. And now that I have a job, hopefully I'll be able to save for one. But yeah, I mean, it's not a priority. I have a computer, it works. It works well enough for me. I don't need something that's crazy super powerful because I don't game that whole much. I don't game too much. I really don't. I spend most of my time. Uh, well, the only game I do play is Minecraft. And I spend the rest of my time either playing guitar, building Lego, walking, reading, watching films, stuff like that. Just. I don't game a whole lot. I used to play GTA quite a bit, but my GTA 5 on my PS4 got corrupted. And I, I have it on PC as well, but my PC. Unfortunately, can't handle GTA too well. It is playable, but it's just not too enjoyable for me. And plus, I've done a lot of what's in... I've completed the GTA storyline about four times now, so... It's getting a little boring. I know there's online, but I don't really have many people to play with, so... I stick to Minecraft, where I have an endless amount of creativity to build things, to explore mods, a uh, survival server to play with uh, friends on. I'm just going to have a bit of a smoke, because why not? a little smoke ring. I always love doing that. Uh, yeah, I have a survival SMPDX where I play on with loads and loads of people. And yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's fun. I like Minecraft much more than other games just because it's so creative. It's so... There's, there's endless possibilities. There's never anything that you don't know what to do really i mean there are stages where you go i don't really want to know what to do next but there will always be something you can do whereas when you 100 percent a game like gta or 100 percent a game like i just like a normal game with a storyline once you've done the storyline apart from side crests or what there's not a whole lot to actually do with a purpose you can you can obviously do your own thing and role play a bit but there's never anything to do that has a purpose where the entire game is built around having a purpose and minecraft doesn't really have quests it doesn't have a purpose i mean there's obviously fighting the ender dragon fighting the wither exploring dungeons but they're all things you can do over and over again it's never the same really it's never like levels there's not quests but it's open it's free and you can create stuff like this out of Minecraft, which is a mod pack and mods and stuff. You can, like, it's so creative compared to other games. It has so much leeway when it comes to being a game. There's always new content. It's not made by the developers, but there's always new content to go and find. And that's what I really love about the game, which 
I mean, it's really good. I'm genuinely really happy with this game. And I mean, I don't know what they're going to do changing it going forward. But I know a lot of people are very angry with Mojang about how they're doing the whole texture rehaul. They're doing the whole updates and people don't like them. They're doing the whole Java edition compared to the edition for everyone else. You know, it's like they're changing a lot of things. But hey, why why does I don't get why people everyone stresses out about the changes. If you don't like the texture changes, just use a resource pack that revolts it back to the default. It's not hard. Like and people say, well that's not vanilla. Well you've got to make a choice whether you want to play vanilla without without liking the new textures or what they bring to the vanilla game or you want to play with a resource pack or you want to play modded to keep it interesting or you want a mod to get the features you want that people aren't well that the people at Mojang aren't putting into the game and not stay vanilla and enjoy yourself so my personal opinion on it is if you want to stay vanilla stay vanilla just don't moan about it if you are adamant about staying in the vanilla game and I love vanilla like vanilla playability and love playing vanilla without mods without resource packs stay vanilla but then when a new update comes out don't start complain about how mojang is ruining minecraft because there's always a way to get around it they can do what they want it's their game but the best thing about their game is you can get around it with mods and stuff and if you are like me where if i am wanting something in the game if i'm wanting the entirety of middle earth in the game i can go get it from a mod i don't have to wait for mojang to have the chance of putting it in when they most likely 100 percent probably wouldn't like but i can go and mod like play mods and play mod packs and enjoy myself and not have to stay in the vanilla game because i mean minecraft doesn't have s pipe weed and pipes and stuff but this mod pack still feels vanilla it still feels like minecraft all the textures are minecraft-esque all the textures textures fit into the game yet it's not vanilla so I, I don't go out and play mods that aren't vanilla whatsoever they make like everything real life-esque like real life graphics i don't like shaders particularly but when it comes to playing mods for the content, I will. I love them. I love mods. I absolutely love mods. And that's my personal opinion. I know a lot of people will disagree with me on that. But, I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. It's just when their opinion contradicts itself. That's what annoys me. When people say they love the vanilla game. And then when Mojang come and add to the vanilla game. And they all complain about the additions to the vanilla game and i mean you can quite easily if you don't like that edition play an older version of the game if you want a different edition mod it if you want the textures changed texture pack Mo Yang aren't going to um stop adding a feature just because a handful of people saying they hate it it's their game they are overall have the control over it and i mean the new textures are being good because um the artist who's doing them is taking feedback on his textures which is good that's a step in the right direction but when the texture change comes i guarantee half the internet is going to erupt in negative responses about this texture rehaul and half the internet is going to stay quiet because it's a lot more difficult to say to listen to nice things than it is to listen to bad things it's the nice things don't stick it's bad things that stick and it's also a lot harder to compliment someone it's far easier to insult someone than to compliment someone because that's just how life is people find it more difficult to get the guts to compliment someone than they get the guts to insult someone and that's why so many people insult people in this world that's why so many people have such negativity in this world you just need to find the confidence to tell people what you like tell people that they're doing well comment on the videos saying hey this was really good rather than leaving a hate comment saying hey this was stupid or you should go kill yourself or whatever the youtube comment section has turned into these days it's far more difficult to get your voice heard as well if you're 
being positive. But in, in real life, a very good example is when you're talking to someone and, like, you're talking to maybe, say you're a guy and you're a straight guy and there's a girl and you have a kind of thing for the girl and you notice that what you think her hair looks nice or something. It's It takes far more courage to say, oh, you have nice hair today, than it does to make an offensive comment to someone who you, like, so you, there are two people. Trying to, trying to explain this is kind of hard, but you'll probably get what I'm getting at after I explain it a little bit more. Two people. One of them, you have something nice to say about. One of them, you have something nasty to say about. So there's one person who has an amazing hairstyle, and there's one person who has a bowl cut that their mum did with a pair of kitchen scissors that are usually used for cutting labels off clothes. Let's put it that way. And it takes a lot more courage to say to that one person, hey, I really like your hair, or hey, I really... It takes far more courage to say that than to go, who cut your hair, your mum, like, to the guy who had the bad haircut. It takes far, far more courage to compliment the person with the nice haircut than it is, does to insult the person, because to insult the person, you'll probably get a laugh out of it from the person you wanted to compliment, so you get your laugh that way, but it's at the expense of someone else, and that's honestly a lot of what happens in this day and age, but when it comes back to just being a nice person for the sake of being a nice person, like, it's not difficult to go out and say to someone that they look good today or you think they're an amazing person or something. It's once you start saying that to people, it's not difficult to continue. It's starting to say that it's getting to a point where you're comfortable with saying that to people is the difficulty. So basically my advice to anyone listening who wants to be a nice person or who thinks they're a nice person just check if you're doing these things. Are you telling your friends that, like, are you reassuring your friends and girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever, your parents, family, are you complimenting them? Are you saying good things about them? Or are you concentrating more on when you see someone you don't particularly get along with? Are you having more to say badly towards them? Because what I found when you have something bad to say you never have really have a filter to not say it. You just sort of go straight ahead and say it. But when you have something like a good thought about someone, there's usually a filter there that stops you from saying it for the fear of being embarrassed, for the fear of them going like, what? Or the fear of them thinking something that maybe you don't intend them to think. But, like, trust me, more often than not, telling someone what you think about them in a good way telling someone the good things you think about them that will stick with them the rest of the day that will make their day whereas compared to you telling them something bad or telling something bad to someone they will either brush it off straight away and just not remember it or that will stick with them for a lot longer than a day and make them doubt themselves and make them not have too much of a self-confidence boost basically and that's what the main issue with sort of my age group and a lot of people in this world now is a lot of them don't have any self-confidence because of how nasty people can be. And I mean, the smallest comment, you may think it means nothing, but the smallest comment can have an effect on people. And I guess the message I'm trying to portray in this little rant here that I've gone off on a bit of a tangent about is just be nice to people, just say nice things and don't worry about what they may think about you because they will not think anything badly about you for complimenting them they will not think anything about you that they didn't think before they will just accept that and say well that was actually really nice that was that's going to stick with them all day and that's going to cheer them up and that's going to help them be able to bat away any bad things that other people who don't listen to advice like this uh say to them this just a little bit of a nice act does help so oh there's a little bit of the firebeards and broadbeams in the um path to the 
foothills of the Blue Mountains. We'll get there back there in a minute. But back on back on track to what I was saying. Just compliment people. Don't be afraid to what they're going to think of that compliment. It just takes a lot more courage in a person. Basically, don't think that just because you're insulting people and thinking and bigging yourself up by putting other people down that people are going to think you're some sort of legend you're some sort of big man or big woman whatever but don't think that people are gonna think that of you because what shows true what what shows you true truly to be the bigger man or bigger woman is when you have the courage to be able to say to someone hey i like your outfit or hey you look good today or hey i think you're amazing that is when it comes to being the bigger person that's when you're going to get more respect from more people is when you're nice to people because a lot of the time if you try and be a big man a big oh i'm going to be this that the other i'm going to put all of you other people down because i am the best and think that you're going to have so many friends and so many people who are going to big you up no uh there are going to be people who big you up and there are going to be people who respect that but they're usually the people who do the same or they are doing it out of fear because of you you think that they're going to put you down if you don't big them up but so again they're not going to be true friends they're going to be people who are like you who want to big themselves up or want to have a reputation of themselves by being with the big man or something like that so that's how you know that you've not got true friends whereas if you're nice to people and you know that they aren't staying with you just to be reputationized or something it's a lot more simple to know that i'm getting distracted by showing basically what i'm trying to say is be nice to people then you know who your friends are when they're nice back if people aren't nice back don't give them the light of day keep them keep them close but don't keep them as close as someone who goes out of their way to be nice to you because they've probably listened to something along the lines of this and thought to themselves well i should start be i should start being nicer to people because i missed that i should start being nice to people because i've actually decided that i want to be a nice person to people i want to give back to people who have been nice to me and that's what i do I'm nice to everyone unless they do something that means that they don't deserve my niceness. That they don't deserve me being nice to them. And I try to be nice to everyone. But a lot of the time people go out of their way and mean, and make it mean that they don't deserve me being nice to them. Which I mean, is kind of, kind of I guess a bad thing. But you learn to live with it and you learn to go along that either have have nice friends or have no friends because you can't have friends who aren't nice because they aren't friends they are with you for their own personal gain and not to be friendly to you and that is something i've learned over the last two three years of my life where i've learned who my real friends are where so many people have been with uh been friends with me just to get personal gain and such like that and it's like that on youtube as well I mean, I'm not a big channel, but I know bigger channels have a similar issue where smaller channels act friendly towards them and to get a collaboration with them and act friendly purely to get a collaboration with them. And then after they get the collaboration, they get the sub boost, they just uh, leave, they just go and bigger channels will be able to vouch for me for that because that does, that does happen and I'm not a big channel and that hasn't happened to me. But I know it does happen and it's just a very similar comparison to what I'm trying to say in the sort of real life sort of sense of what I'm trying to say. But I guess I should stop rambling about deep things that don't really fit in a Minecraft setting that people haven't come to listen to. They've come to listen to me shouting and screaming at different orcs that I'm trying to kill. So we can we can change to doing that in just a second. I just wanted to sort of get a little bit of a rant out of the way and get that sort of sorted so let's get into killing orcs come on give me a vest come at me i'll kill you all i will kill you all 
Oh, you think you can take me? Come on, I'm geared up. I will take you all. I will absolutely kill all of you. Come on. Is that all you've got? What do we get? We've got loads of stuff. We've got a Mordor dagger. That's quite cool. And we got a kill list again. Got quite a few stuff. Right. Well. What's going on now? Are we having... Got more Gundabad Orcs wanting to have a... Wanting to have a tussle? Come on, then. Come on. I haven't even got a hit in on me yet. Ooh. Got some armor. Hello, hello. I think it's about time you get the chop. There we go. Went a very British then. Hello, hello. Come on, get the chop then. Chop like fish and chips on a meat board. I don't know, I even know what I'm saying anymore. I should I should stop that. That was weird. Right, I should find a quick place to get some sleep because that is a that is enough orc chopping for one day. I think we'll chop more orcs in just a bit. But for now, we'll make it daytime so we don't get any more orcs, um, any more orcs are harassing us. What did, what achievement did we get? Blue Dwarven Friend. What was our alignment with the Blue Dwarves? 24. Pretty good. Let's put, we don't want to put our pipe weed away. Let's put everything away that we're not holding on to. We've got two of them. That Silver coins, maggoty bread, bone sticks. Arrows, we've got quite a few. We've got a kill list and some armor. So, and a dagger. So let's have a look at this. We need to go into our coin pouch. Stick that in there to collect them up. Let's have a look at this armor. So we got a tough Angmar chest plate. Common protection plus seven with one plus one protection. What's this? Plus seven with plus one protection. So this is slightly worse than that, but we'll hold on to it. And we got plus six with us one. Plus five. Ooh, so we got better legs from that. So that's quite good. We got some better legs from Malmak the Gundabad Orc. Thank you, Malnak. Let's put our equipment in our equipment pouch. We got this cool Mordor dagger, which we can put in there as well. And let's have a look at this kill list that we got. So this one's by Zaglun. These maggots deserve to die. They will feed the sting. They will feel the sting of my blade in their guts. Lagsha, Radbug, and Radish. <laughs> Radish. <laughs> Bloody vegetable. <laughs> uh, and Naglak and Shagbit. I've managed to find another 10 lads who have offered to help me kill the skull, and once we're done, we'll loot their bodies and say they fell from the cliffs. The bosses won't know a thing about it. So that's very similar for Radish. <laughs> oh, Radish. That's, that's, made, that's made my day, knowing that there's an orc out there called Radish, and he probably gets bullied for having a name that sounds like a vegetable, which he shouldn't, because remember, you got to be nice to people rather than nasty. But it's an orc, so he's not a person. So, they they tried to kill me. So, yeah, the only time you can be nasty to people is when they try to kill you. So, lesson learnt from this episode. Be nice to people unless they try to kill you. And then kill them or laugh at their name, Radish. I think that's a fair thing to say. And look at my armour, it's going up. And look at this, I love this little Angmar legs with my uh, elven armour. It just makes me feel like a pure... Traveller that I'm picking up people's armor on the way through and we're on our way up to Nogrod. We're doing quite well Halfway through the episode and we've had a massive deep rant We've killed about 30 or so. No, not about that. We killed about 15 orcs and Gained some lovely alignment with the blue mountains and none in oh none in Linden I don't think but we're not probably not the most Yeah, we're probably not the happiest with Gundabad are we no? They, they aren't our biggest fan at the moment. I think that's pretty obvious to tell. Oh well. Let's just calm ourselves down. Whew. Very calming. Some lovely pipe weed. Old Toby. Yeah, my name's Toby. And I'm smoking old Toby. Out with the old, in with the new. Does that mean I'll be made into pipe weed when I die? And I'll be... Old new Toby. I don't know. That that's not how it works, is it? Who was old Toby? I'm guessing he grew pipe weed. Interesting. Well, let me comment on some of the things. These bricks make a pattern that look like arrows on the floor. But I really love dwarven bricks. 
I love their colouring, the black colouring, the dark colouring. It's, it's lovely. I mean, we haven't actually seen any structures or anything for quite a while. We haven't seen any dwarves yet either, but we will we will find dwarves. That is, a, that is a definite when we get to the Blue Mountains. But these trees, these highland trees, really make it feel like we are high up. Because we are high up. I mean, well, we're not high up at the moment, but we will be high up. We're in the highlands. And it feels like the highlands rather than normal Minecraft extreme hills, where it doesn't feel like the highlands, really. This feels... Very much like we're about to get into some mountains. We're in the foothills of those mountains. And I mean, there's bits of this blue blue mountains rock everywhere. I mean, when we actually see the blue mountains emerging, which we will very soon. That's going to be crazy because they are incredible. And it will make for some thumbnail, I can definitely assure you that. I mean, the clouds are moving quite fast. But yeah, we got... A bit, yeah, these are definitely going to cause a little bit of frame rate lag because the Blue Mountains are magnificent. They are absolutely huge. They are the coolest structure. But structure, they are, they are one of the coolest biomes. I mean, what a sight. And we got a dwarf. Let's just get up on here and take a bit of a thumbnail, I think. Like, that is one hell of a view. That would make an incredible thumbnail. Who are you and why are you running away so swiftly? I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to find out who you were. Who was our first dwarf? We are Barris and of Hoon. Hoen. There is good stonework here. What do we have? Fully armoured up dwarf. This is Caleb son of Loney. Wow. Well then, we have found ourselves the Blue Mountains. They are blue and they are mountains. So, names on the tin. Is that a house? Have we already found a dwarven house? We have. Hello, hello. We love finding them. And that's a dwarf woman. Okay, we got a achievement spot the dimmers. Thona, son of Darlin. Uh, daughter of Darlin. Okay, and who are you? You are Cory, son of Kilbil. Kibil. Kilbil. Let's just steal all your food. Dwarves are notorious for having good food, so we will steal. What do we have down here? More food. Of course we do. The dwarves. Blue dwarven crafting. We will snag that up. That goes in our workstation pouch. For all of our workstations. We have in here is just some more food. Red meat and white meat. Various different types of meat. I love the blue mountains. They are lovely, the blue mountains. And then down here, this will be like the equipment area. So we got a sword, which is a blue dwarven sword. Eight melee damage with plus one, and this is 8.5. So this is nine. That's. I'm going to. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to actually end up taking. Changing out my battle axe finally for a keen blue dwarf. Oh, what's this? This is. We don't want daggers. We got some, some silver. Blue dwarven bed, some iron, ale horns, pork chops, and stuff like that. Pick them up. But we got a new weapon. It's a blue dwarven sword, and it's yep, it's better than our blue do uh, than our Dalish battle axe. So we have swapped it out. It was good meeting you two. Back out the stone door and back onto the road. So we just got to look around for these openings in the hills, which give away that there's a dwarven house there, but. I'm glad we got a new weapon. It's been a while since we've had a new weapon. It's a little it's a little sword. It's a bit small. But I guess I'm not a dwarf, so that's not a house, that's a cave. But yeah, th this is incredible. Like good job on the terrain generation for these biomes. Like really good job to the developers of this mod. They've absolutely nailed mountains. Is that another house? No. I mean, it might be. I doubt it, though. We'll check. We'll double check. Actually, no, they can only be stone. They're not blue stone, so... That's one, though. And there. We've got two more houses to have a look at. I mean, these ones are really a pain in the bum to actually look. Uh, look in. Because they're everywhere. They're... Hello. So, we've got... More food. 
What do we have down here? Oh, we got a dwarven battle axe. Well, this one's even better than our blue dwarven sword, so we'll leave the sword there. I mean, this hammer's probably going to be better. Yeah, that's even better. So, I mean, we'll stick that in our equipment pouch just so we have an extra weapon. Oh, our equipment pouch is filling up. We got a new pickaxe. Perfect. That's something else we needed. What's this? A pike. Don't need a pike. We need... We got venison to put in our food pouch. How is our food pouch coming along? Wow, our food pouch is very full. There we go. But yeah, I'm glad we got a new weapon. We got a war hammer now. That's really cool. Blue Dwarven war hammer. This just sounds cool to say more than anything. Yes, I have a hefty Blue Dwarven war hammer with plus three knockback. I mean, a very slow speed, but the damage makes up for that. And I've got some good armor that will be able to uh, ward off the damage, which is good. I don't think I can be bothered to climb up. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm not going to climb up to that door because we will find more doors because we are only just in here. And I don't even think we'll stop off. We'll go up north into Belagost. We'll just go through Nogrod and back into Linden. Because, I mean, the dwarves, they are definitely skilled craftsmen. 100% skill with these dwarves here. We got a quest. We got a quest. 11 Gundabad orcs, my friend. You know what? We can do that. We will accept that quest because I want to get some alignment. Where's the sun? There. There. can't tell where it is it's right in the middle of the day so we will kind of stay around here re raiding these until it becomes night time and then we can slay 11 gundabad orcs and get that quest complete what do we oh with legs we have not good legs uh better 1.5 durability 1.5 i want the tool speed rather than durability oh we got some stuff um a tough blue dwarven helmet with plus four protection and this has got plus four protection but I want that helmet it looks cooler <laughs> no it doesn't it has it doesn't have the spike on it it actually doesn't look cooler but I'll stick it in there anyway we'll have a spare uh, some blue dwarven steel some cooked chicken blue dwarven steel can go in the valuables pouch with everything else we've have we got this uh, um, annals of Kazadum which has a question mark volume two the friendship between the Khazad of Khazad Doom and the Elves of Eregion brought much fortune to both realms. However, it was not to last. In the 1697th year of the Second Age, the Dark Enemy of Mordor invaded the land of Holin. He came with Orc hosts beyond the Count to destroy their mighty kingdom and break their great friendship of our people. During the Third, then Lord of Ka then, then Lord of Khazad Doom did not sit idle. He sent a great host to aid our Elf friends, but. Uh, but through we fought, but though we fought fiercely, we could not save the people of Holland. We were forced to retreat back to Kazadum, shutting our gates against the Dark Lord and the outside world. These were grim days, an age of grief and woe. For it was also at this time that the holy mountain of Gundabad, where Durin the Deathless awoke, was sacked and conquered by orcs of the north. Among all vile acts of orcs through the long ages of history, this sacrilege is counted the worst. Though we had not the strength to retake the mountain then, we swore, as we do now, that one day Mount Gundabad will again belong to the children of Durin. The isolation of Khazad-dum was absolute, though it would, uh, would for a time be broken during the Great War of the Last Alliance, when we marched with men and elves against the hosts of Mordor. After that terrible war, our people shut the gates once again and retreated back into our halls. Thus conclude the annals of Khazad-dum during the Second Age of the World. Again, wow. What, what, what mementos? I mean, if there's mementos like this in every biome now, it's going to be incredible. Because I am really enjoying these mementos. I don't want this. Put it down. That is crazy stuff. Oh, I've blocked myself in the blocks. Oops. Okay, well, we've got a little ways until, until night time, but we will... We will hold out and we will do our quest. We will not be leaving the Blue Mountains in this episode. We will have yet another episode with the Blue Mountains. You've got a quest as well. Collect one mithril ingot. When I have mithril, I will give it to you. Hopefully you'll have mithril somewhere. So we don't have to go too far. 
There we go. But yeah, I wanna I wanna find a mithril. Mithril is quite nice, and I'm sure we'll be able to spare some for you. What do you have on this battle axe? Hefty again. Not as good as our one we have at the moment. What about this warhammer? Dull. <laughs> no. Well then, we got a swift blue dwarven mattock. Oh, mattocks are good. I want a mattock. I don't want this blue dwarf. Yeah, mattocks are good because they, in mine, they chop and they dig. So I want to hold on to that. Our pickaxe can go in here. Uh, in here we have a true silver. We've got a bad chest plate, a little throwing axe, which I mean we'll hold on to. That's quite a cool thing to have in our hot bar. Some blue dwarf steel and my ingot, as well as a cooked mutton. Well, let's read this. True silver. On and on I mine and mine, my picks grow dull, my hands grow sore. A walking in this blackened cave, I hunt for treasures evermore. Down this hole I carry on, my pouch is filled with ores and stone. Now light my strewn throughout my path, and there the true light sparkles lone. True silver, oh it calls to me, its shining beholding guides my way. I raise my tool to swing once more, and silver fades to dark and grey. Talking about true silver, which is of course mithril. And I read that really quickly, so I'm sorry if you didn't keep up, but just go back and pause when you want to read more. But yeah, it's good fun reading these things. I like dwarves. Dwarves are probably my favourite race in Middle-earth. And I mean, when we do get... I mean, is, he was writing about uh, Mithril. He wants me to give him a Mithril. I think we have found someone who might like Mithril a little bit. There's another door up there. Perfect. So we still have a little ways until night time. I'd assume orcs spawn in the Blue Mountains. I mean, they might not because... I mean, they might just not, but... I hope they do. Hello. Why do you have effects? Seeding food, even though we probably don't need it. There we go. Oh, someone said something about plates being able to skip over water, so I'm going to hold on to a plate and see if that's true, because I actually kind of want to see that. I mean, just hope we'll be able to find some water. But I want to try that. That sounds really cool. Uh, what do we have down here? We've got a helmet. Cooling, it's not that great. Pickaxe, just bog standard pickaxe. We've got an axe. Oh, that's a mattock. 1.52 speed. Handy, yeah, that's better than our mattock. Let's put this mattock back. Hello, we got some boots, just normal boots, not as good as our boots. We've got some pretty good boots, don't we? Yeah, we got plus four protection versus falling. Pretty good. Alright, let's let's go find ourselves some water. There'll be some down here, I'd assume. I mean the lower we go, yeah, there'll be water down in the foothills. Just make sure we don't lose the road. And I mean there are definite definite orcs that spawn in the foothills, so when it becomes night time, we'll be able to fight them. But we will find some water, hopefully down here. There we are, we got some water, let's see. If the rumour is true about uh, this. Oh my! Okay, I guess that kind of skipped. That was quite cool. That was fun. I like that. Calm, sun go down. We're going to complete this quest in this episode. And wow, a little bit of frame rate. Hello, Mr. Nally, son of Burin. And who are you? Bomber, son of Hoen. Are you Bomber? You don't look like Bomber, you're not fat enough. Keely, son of Nail. I guess you could be Keely. Who are you? Darling, son of Boffer. Yeah, probably Boffer's son. I mean, the names for the dwarves are very, very descendant of the dwarves from uh, The Hobbit. But they're obviously not the same people because they're not just, they, they, they just aren't. Like, that's deemly son of Durin. I mean, Durin's quite a, quite an upstanding figure. I don't think he might be his only son. I mean, unless they're all sons. Well, they are all sons of Durin. That's what they call themselves, so. Did we go into that house up there? I don't know. We'll, have, we'll double check. No harm in double checking. I mean, we can tell by... Oh, you got a quest. To Sapphire. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, there's definitely a lack of stuff here. I don't have any sapphire and I don't know where you get it. So I'm not going to give you the sapphire. I guess we could go for a mine. Oh, I didn't mean to throw that. This looks quite fun to throw there. How much damage does it do? 175% range damage and this does 150% range damage. So this does better damage, but it's obviously only one at a time. Where's our red book? There. I want to kind of keep that on me if possible. So what's this? Mithril. Okay, so we only need to save, uh, save uh, Slay 11, but I don't really want to collect him. I think I might abandon that quest. But I will do this one because Mithril Mithril's hard to come across. It's rare and I want it because I want Mithril armor because Mithril's good. But this is... I'm looking great with my little battle, ha battle hammer, war hammer, that's the one. My good armor... My little beard. I mean, I almost a dwarf. I'm just not sure. I'm a tall dwarf. I'm the tallest dwarf. So where was the guy who wanted us to... So the guy who wanted us to slay things was off this way. I've gone the wrong way. He was, yeah, back east ways. So we'll sort of stay around him for when we complete the quest. And I would assume when we complete the quest we get given... Uh, gold and stuff when we have to go complete the quest when we've slain ten of them, but I guess do we put this up? Tracking progress, okay. Oh yeah, there it is now. Good. Wanna see how good we fare against them. So the sun's going down, we'll watch the sunset. Down between the blue mountains. I mean that could be a bit of a thumbnail opportunity. Watching the sunset down I mean, why not? Why not? Let's let's put this in there. Watch the sunset. Between the blue mountains and then when the orcs spawn we can absolutely wreck them and take them down and slay orcs until we get the quest done and or just keep slaying them and just have fun because why not slaying orcs is good fun. I love it So this sun's taking a while to go down But we will Wait we will wait Come on son You can do it Nope. In a minute. Let's let's line ourselves up a bit more centrally here. There we go. That's a bit better. Come on. I want the sunset to happen. I want to... I want to be able to... Take a good screenshot of the sun going down over the horizon of the Blue Mountains. With the dwarf in it over there. God, the sunset's taking forever, actually. Is it actually going down? It is, but it's taking forever. Uh, come on. I don't have too long of this episode left. There we go. There's the orange I wanted to see. Okay, let's wait for it to go really orange before I take a screenshot. Just as it goes down. That's looking beautiful. Okay, that's a good screenshot. There we go. Sorted. Okay, the sun's going down. You can look at it again. Night time's coming. Let's slay some orc. Let's do it. Let's go over here where we can have some friends to help us. They're all kitted out. Well, this guy is certainly... You're certainly kicked it out. Look at you, Mr. Dorin, son of Nain. Right, what do we have to slay? I want to slay Orc. So, does Orc spawn in the Blue Mountains, or do they only spawn in the foothills? I'm unsure. I mean, I know they definitely spawn in the foot. I mean, if we don't see any, we can always go down to the foothills. Barely night time, so. God, that what a view. Come on, then. Let's orc. Let's kill orc. I want orc. Come on, orc. Any orcs? 
I need takers, come on. Any takers. I feel like if we go down to foothills a bit, we may encounter some. Or are these just still the blue mountains? I guess. Surely there'll be orcs spawning. Surely. No. Really, orcs don't spawn in the Blue Mountains. I was looking forward to slaying some orc. Oh. We could backtrack a little. Uh, we could let's try let's try backtracking out back into the foothills. We may be going over a little bit over an hour, but why not? An hour and ten minutes shouldn't be too bad. Because I want to slay eleven orcs in this. I want to go and do my quest. So yeah, we we may as well. We got nothing to lose by turning back a little bit, except a little bit of distance I can make back up and matter. What should I make that noise for? Oh! Aha, they do spawn. Aha. They do spawn. That's good. We don't have to leave. Come on, then. Where are you? Can't only be one. Can't only be one, surely not. Come on, more. I want to slay some more orcs. There we go. Jackpot. Missed. Doesn't matter. Come on then. Come on then! Come on then! Come on then! Where did that? Where did my throwing axe go? I've lost my throwing axe. Yes, it's exactly what I wanted. There we go. This is more fun. This is more like it. I'd make a great dwarf. Except I lost my throwing axe. Has anyone seen my throwing axe? Anyone? Is that it? No, that they must be your throwing axes. Has anyone seen my throwing axe? Anybody seen my throwing axe? It's a rabbit. I don't see a throwing axe or orcs. Oh, there are some over there. They're beating up a dwarf. Let's go help. Oh, I accidentally killed the dwarf. Oops. There we go. Oops. Well, we got some boots. Belong to Feely. <laughs> we killed Feely's son by accident. Oops. Well, that's not helpful. Come on, we need a couple more. Couple more orcs now. Yeah. That's what you get for killing my friend. That's what I thought. Poor dwarves. It's just dwarves getting killed left, right, and center. God, there are loads of all, uh, dwarves up here. But we need more orcs because orcs are the things we've got to kill. We don't want, we don't want to kill all uh, dwarves. There we go. Oh, these these guys are teaming up on this guy. Hey, it's my kill. I need to kill them and so I can get money. It would be called fur. Who who dropped plates? Or is that a plate that I threw earlier? 
I don't know, but we need a couple more Gundabad orcs. This just drops everywhere. We run around and collect them up. Where are you? Come to me. I've got two more. Only two more. Two more and then I can get my quest. And then I can end the episode. Two more. Come on. Come on. Two more. Just need a little, little pack of two. And I will be happy. Quests. What do you want? Collect four dwarven... 40 spawn of... Kingdom. Both of those are enticing, but no, not something I can do. What do you want me to do? 13 glowstone. Where am I supposed to get glowstone from? I'm not going to the nether. The nether doesn't exist in Middle Earth. All we need is two Gundabad orcs. What did we just pick up? I don't know. Random stuff. We got some orc drought there. What do you do? Interesting. There we go. So we've got a little bit of speed, a little bit of strength. So we want orcs now because they need to be slain, but they aren't anywhere. I don't see any orcs whatsoever. It will be daytime again before we see some orcs, which is not good because we need two more orcs. Can't afford to be going too much longer because then it will be too long an episode, which wouldn't be good. So, come on. We need orcs. I know there's dwarves everywhere. And, all, and dwarves kill orcs, but... Come on, there really can't be zero orcs here. There can't be none at all. What if we run this way a little bit? None? Really? It's got to be some. It's got to be. Okay, this is surprising that there's absolutely zero. We have a structure. We're not going to explore it this episode. We're going to do that next episode. We are going to save that structure for the start of next episode. That's cool though. Are there seriously no orcs? Well, I guess we've been thought. Let's have some more orcs out. Sick joke. What did that do? Drink from a skull cup. Okay. That doesn't make sense. Sick joke. I don't understand. Well, I guess we aren't going to be killing the rest of those orcs in today's episode. We've run out of time. But for the start of next episode, we have a dwarven mine to explore. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Minecraft The Lord of the Rings, and I will see you in the next one.